Now, the Da Vinci Institute for Technology Management in Johannesburg will be honoring the world's youngest professor, Professor Sobono Isaac Bari. Uh, Bari specializes in math and science, and according to reports, the nine-year-old Asian-American started solving PhD-level questions at three years old. He's also an author and has been nominated for a Nobel uh, Prize. The young professor joins us now via Zoom, as well as the chairman of Da Vinci Institute, Sichaba Mutsielwa. Uh, thank you to both of you for, for joining me. Let, let me start with you, uh, Professor Isaac Spari. I mean, you are the youngest uh, professor in the world. You are an author. You got your first salary, I understand, at the age of seven. You've received a letter from a Barack Obama for your accomplishments in maths and science. That's amazing stuff. You know how crazy that is? Yes, I know that that is pretty crazy by a lot of standards. And so I am very excited to be here with you today on Anchor. Uh, and I am uh, excited to be here on National News, and I am so, honestly so honored to be here, to be, be receiving the Laureate Award from such a prestigious institution, and to be in a country with such a rich culture. Yeah, and you are passionate about education. Tell me about your passion for education, especially mathematics. So I had this passion when I was younger, one or two maybe, and because well, back then my father was a math and physics student, he was still pursuing a PhD, and he was, well, uh, writing all these equations down on the blackboard in the same room that I was laying down. And so I would be seeing him writing all these equations, and I would be thinking, what do they mean? I had this fascination with this kind of thing. And sometimes he even did experiments. And I was extremely well fascinated. What do these experiments mean? I was extremely fascinated by the amount of creative capacity, the imaginative capacity that you needed to, in order to be able to do some things like math and science. And I was thinking, what do these symbols mean on the black? And so uh, my father saw my fascination with this kind of creativity, this kind of, well, uh, uh, imagination and experimentation. And my father decided to start teaching me math. And I have this passion for mathematics and science still. And it really is just uh, playing with numbers and, and geometric transformations and things like that. It's really just playing with the quantities and seeing what you can get. It's really just a, a, the art of creativity. And uh, there were many geniuses who have created uh, equations like recursive equations just by playing around with numbers and seeing what they can get. So I was really fascinated with the creative capacity and so uh, of the, what math and science was. And so that's what why I was really got into math and science. Yeah. Like I couldn't get into other things like history or maybe things like that. And so that is why I really love the math and science for its creativity. Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's fascinating, uh, Mr. Mutsielo. As the Da Vinci Institute, Institute, why have you decided uh, to honor this youngest professor in the world? Uh, thank you very much, Clement. What Professor Barry uh, represents and symbolizes is the hope of a new way of being. As the youngest professor in the world with interest in the field of mathematics as well as science. He does inspire a generation that can look at using science and maths uh, to solve new complex problems. So we're gonna be giving him the, the Vinci Institute Laureate Award that recognizes social architects, a rare breed of individuals that are able to change how we frame who we are as a society and to make sure that we do have a sustainable uh, society going forward. So it's an honor from the Da Vinci Institute to have Professor Barry uh, being honored this evening at a PhD graduation. Yeah. So Professor Barry, tell me about what your day-to-day -day life is like. I mean, you are young. I mean, younger than 10. Uh, your peers are probably playing outside now. Do you get the time to also be a child and, and, and play when you are not learning and teaching maths and science? Well, I feel like uh, playing is uh, something that even geniuses get to do. Recreation 
is something that even the best of the best need some uh, sometime with one or another. And so, yeah, yes, I do uh, recreate sometimes. Of course I do. I mean, any, everybody has to. I, I think that it's weird if you don't recreate because you are not training your social skills and you're not, not uh, you're missing out the chance to exercise and you honestly are not just uh, going outside and playing and relaxing. And that kind of thing isn't necessary. Uh, even, well, everywhere, you need to be, well, recreative. Uh, and you it also really gets you energetic when you do that kind of thing. So I play chess, I uh, play basketball, I bike, and of course I recreate and play games. So it's very... I think that it's very important to do something like recreation yeah. and uh, doing things like that. And sometimes it can uh, make you energetic. And uh, I think that it's honestly just a really weird thing to not do it in general. I don't know who wouldn't do it because I feel like it's, uh, it's just like a, a necessary thing to play, be able to play outside, to be able to relax, to be able to let it all out when you're under stress. I think that to be an ability every person should have. Yeah. I mean, I want to ask you, Prof, what you want to be when you wake up, I mean, when you grow up, but already you're a professor, already you are an author, uh, already you are being recognized by uh, credible institutions like the Da Vinci Institute. You have received letters uh, from world leaders like Barack Obama. So what is it that you still want to achieve? I feel like I have only achieved a small speck of what I want to achieve in my life. Of, uh, of course, I first want to pursue being a math professor because I want to change the education system and show people that math is not what it's made out to be. Math is rather uh, not, not just a boring set of equations, but being able to play with numbers, the capacity to be creative, to throw around things, to throw around things like numbers, and to be able to use these kinds of things and connect these ideas in ways that never seemed possible before to you know, just play around with things and then make an advanced inferences from them and that is what ultimately gets you a great discovery just playing around and uh, deciding to make an inference from that kind of thing can get you uh, many places now, many people have discovered equations and been called genius because they had the capacity to create they had the capacity to imagine new connections and instead of just going from strict facts uh, i mean math is just as much facts as it is uh, imagining so I think that uh, math is just playing around, uh, but bound by some loose rules that can be broken or added to uh, any time. So I feel like math shouldn't be feared, and so I want to become a math professor and show people what their perspective on math should be. Yeah. I Mr. also want yeah. to at least be the leader of uh, at least a state or a country because I want to show the world that peace, empathy, uh, and peace and empathy will get us places we cannot imagine. And that math and science is the thing that will get us uh, further than ever, but no, never been for. And so I think that I think that it is very uh, important for me to at least pursue being a teacher or telling people that math and science is not what it's made out to be. So I want to pursue a PhD, maybe a degree or two, and I want to pursue being a professor.